What we're going to do now is finish up our section C.4. The only thing we have to really talk about is how to add, subtract, and multiply and divide polynomials. The only one that's going to take us any work at all is the division. The adding and subtracting are just like combining like terms, which you have been doing for a long time. The multiplication is distribution, which you have been doing for a long time. The division, we're going to refresh your memory on how to divide polynomials. So that's the one where we spend most of our time the last few minutes of class. Let's do this thing and finish up our review. In case you didn't know, we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide polynomials just like we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. It's possible. We can put them together, we can subtract them, we can multiply them, or, or divide them. So we're going to talk a little bit about polynomials today. Also. That word polynomial, that's weird to a lot of people. Like, what's a polynomial? What's a polynomial? There's, there's two parts to that. Uh, the nomial part means terms. The poly part means many or several. So what a polynomial is, is a mathematical expression with several terms. One, well, it could be more than one term. They count as polynomials. But usually two or more terms. Those terms... <coughs> We talk about terms in here. Terms are things that are separated by pluses and minuses. So we're just going to be adding these many terms together if we can. Let's take a look at some, some adding polynomials. Typically when you see these problems, you're going to have two sets of large parentheses, parentheses saying this is our first polynomial plus our second polynomial. That's really what they're doing is separating those for you. Saying this came from somewhere, this other one came from somewhere, and we want to add them together. right off the bat, can you tell me how many terms does our first polynomial have? Three. Good. How about our second polynomial? Three. So each one of these little parts does not count as a term. The terms are only those things which are separated by pluses and minuses. So we have one, remember that's a negative, one, two, three terms, one, two, we got three terms in each case. Now we also see these parentheses. We need to find a way to eliminate those parentheses so we can go on and combine our like terms on this problem. The only thing you have to look out for is if you have to distribute anything on these parentheses. So if there are numbers out front, sure, they need to distribute. If there were negatives or a minus sign, you'd have to distribute that. Does anything have to distribute in this particular problem? No, no there's, there's nothing out here. There's maybe a 1, you consider it a 1, but nothing in, in this parentheses is going to change. Also, this says a plus sign. This is kind of like having a plus 1. If you distribute positive 1, are any of these signs going to change? So when you're adding polynomials, really nothing changes. Those parentheses are just grouping for you. So we can say, oh, nothing distributes. This is the same thing as if I were to write it without the parentheses. The plus is still going to be there. I'm going to have the 3y squared minus 4y minus 10. Nothing to distribute, no minus, nothing's going to change here. You, you still with me? What now? Combine like terms. Terms. That's it. If you know how to combine like terms, you're done. So basically, adding polynomials is eliminating parentheses and combine like terms. Uh, what are my like terms here, by the way? Okay. So we're going to go through and how I like to do it. I like to circle the term with the sign because that goes with it. And then we use addition rule to combine those terms. So we have a negative y squared. Of course, that means the negative 1y squared. We've got the 3y squared. If we put those together, how much do we have? Two Perfect. So we write that. Should be in order of descending exponent. We're going to cross these out as we go, making sure we don't miss any. Then we look for another couple like terms if there are any. Are there any more like terms? 6y and what else? Negative 4y. Good. goes with the sign. If we combine those 6y... Negative 4y, we're going to get 
So we put the plus because it's positive, and then 2i. <coughs> Lastly, any numbers are also like terms. So we have our 1, we have our negative 10. When we combine those using the addition rule here, that's what we're using, we're going to get minus 9. Do we have any more like terms? No. No, we're good to go. This is it. It's in order of how we like it. It goes y squared, then y, then the constant. That's in our, our standard form. And that's as far as we go. So does anything change on this if we say we no longer want to add polynomials, we want to subtract polynomials? Let's see. How many terms in the first polynomial? One. Good. And the second? Three. Good. The question is this. Can I do the exact same thing with this problem as I did with this problem? Which means, can I just drop the parentheses and go for it in this particular case? No. Okay. Good. That's the right answer. That's great. How about the first one? Do I change any of these no, things? No. Any signs over here? No. Well, this is exactly the same as this part of it. Because there's no number up front, there's no negative or anything up front, I'm not going to distribute or change anything. However, what happens is over here. This is the big deal. And in fact, we saw this on some of those equations that you have on your homework, where you had to put those parentheses. You remember that? The negative actually distributed. That's what we have to do here. You've pretty much done this, in, included in those equations. We just have to keep cognizant of the fact that this minus is really like you're saying a negative 1. And that's going to distribute and change every sign in our second parentheses. So while this doesn't change at all, <coughs> this negative will distribute. And basically all we're doing is we're going to be changing these signs. So what's the first thing I need to write here? And then what, what after that? And lastly, that's it. Then we go through the same process we just finished, combine some like terms. So the only difference is, look, for, look at the second parentheses here. If you have a minus, you need to distribute it. If you don't, then don't worry about it. Just drop the parentheses. So let's combine some like terms. We're going to do it kind of quickly since we just practiced that. We've got our 5x to the fourth. We've got our negative 7x to the fourth. What's that going to give us? So we have that one. Are there any other like terms with the negative 6x squared? No. So we're going to go down the line, but there's not like terms. We're just going to write it right after that. Then we look for any z's. I've got a z here. I look, I have a 2z over there. How many z's does that make for us? So we put plus 3z. And lastly, we have a plus 1. We have a minus 1. Numbers are like terms. How much does that give us? Yeah. So we're going to, as far as we can go with this problem. How many people feel okay with adding and subtracting the polynomials? We'll start the multiplication. We'll see if we can get through it. <clears throat> if not, we'll just start it next time. I just want to show you what that looks like. So when we have something like 4x minus 1, like that. The question all the time is, how can you get rid of parentheses? How can we, in this case, because we are multiplying between those parentheses, how can we get rid of those parentheses? Good. <coughs> Do the what now? Perfect. So we will distribute. We, you have something that will distribute this, right? It's not precisely foil, is it? It's fo foil. This is kind of like, well, foil oil. Because you get the thing about it is the idea of foil is every term in the first polynomial gets multiplied by every term in the second polynomial. That's really the idea. We use foil because it's kind of a nice acronym. We can, we can go off of that. But here we'd say, okay, as long as you're taking 4x times all three of these terms, 
and this negative one including the sign times all three of these terms and then combine like terms, that's going to do it for us. We'll start this next time, okay? Okay, so as you remember from last time, we were working on that problem. We're trying to multiply some polynomials we've already added and we've, and we've subtracted them. So if you look at that, we said that this is not quite FOIL, but it is distribution. Oh, and what the distribution means is we're just going to try to take every term in our first polynomial, multiply it by every term in our second polynomial, then if there's some like terms, we'll combine them. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this to you or not, there's an easy way to see how many terms you're going to end up with before you combine like terms. Uh, and here's how it, how it works. How many terms are in this first polynomial? How many are in the... What's two times three? Six. We're going to get six terms before we combine like terms. And that will kind of a double check to see if you have this thing right. So, if you're paying attention out there, what's the first thing I need to do with this problem? What needs to get multiplied? Three minus three minus four. Minus okay, great. Just be careful that when we're distributing, we're getting the correct exponent. We're doing all that stuff right. So when we do 4x times x squared, we're going to get what? 4x cubed. Perfect. Yeah, exactly right. And then we'll keep going. We're going to do our 4x times our negative, or we're going to consider it to be a negative 3x. Those signs take care of themselves. We're going to get how much? Minus 12x squared. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you got the x squared part of that too, because we do have those two x's being multiplied together. And lastly, we're going to take our 4x times our, we're going to consider that to be a negative 2, we're going to get how much there? Negative 8. eight. All right, so we'll put a minus 8 with the x. Now what? Minus x squared. Okay, well, how are you getting that? Negative 1. Good, so we've accomplished multiplying the 4x times all three of those terms. Now we'll do that negative 1. We do have to take that sign with it, so that we're going to consider it like a negative 1. The reason why we do that is because we could write that plus negative 1 and distribute it that way. So we're, I guess we're cheating a little bit, but it's not too bad because it's going to come out right. So we do have the negative x squared. Uh, everybody, what's the next thing I'm going to get? Plus 3x. Good. Did you all see the plus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus two. So we get those last ones. And sure enough, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have our six terms. We know at least we've got the appropriate amount of terms. Hopefully we've done this correctly. And the last step is, let's just see if we can combine some like terms, and that'll wrap up our problem for us. Do we have any like terms to combine? Mm -hmm. OK, tell me what they are. Negative 12x and negative x squared. OK, so this one we don't really have any. We're just going to rewrite that. And then, yeah, you're sure enough, you're right. Negative 12x squared and a negative x squared, that gives us x squared. Perfect. We'll keep on going. We have a negative 8x, and I see a 3x when we combine those. Minus 5x. And lastly, we have this plus 2 all by itself out there. We haven't missed anything. We've crossed everything out. It's in the appropriate order. We like having this in descending exponents. So a cube, a square, x to the first, and then a number. That's really how we like to write that. That's like a standard form thing for polynomials. How many of you feel okay with this multiplication? Okay, let's look at one more multiplication problem and go on to division. That'll take us a little bit more time because I'm guessing you haven't practiced division of polynomials in, in quite a while. So I'll kind of review, review that with you. Okay, the question I have for you, is this going to be 25x squared minus 4, or 25x squared plus 4, or something different from those two things? Can, my question is, can you just